Our last topic in pediatric pathology is Wilms tumor. Wilms tumor is the most common primary renal tumor of childhood. Uh, even though it has a relatively low incidence of about 10 per million kids, it's still the most common primary renal tumor. Uh, like the neuroblastomas and all the other solid tumors, it's one of these small round blue cell tumors. It's uh, diagnosed usually a little bit later than the uh, neuroblastoma. If you remember, the average uh, age incidence for neuroblastoma was about two. The range for Wilms is two to five, so it's usually seen a little bit later. Um, only a relatively small percent are multifocal. Usually they're in one place. Uh, and it doesn't matter what synchronous or metachronous means, I have decided. Let's uh, talk about the clinical features. The clinical presentation is a large abdominal mass, and even though it originates uh, kidney, it basically fills uh, a good portion, if not the entire abdomen or distended. It's done with uh, treatment as nephrectomy and combination chemo. And, you know, like many of the pediatric tumors, there's been like a tremendously uh, good positive increase in survival. And I'm very proud to say that this is like one of the tumors, especially pediatric tumors, is that I'm very proud to say there's a two-year survival uh, of 90%, even if there has been spread beyond the kidney. So, you know, like the uh, acute uh, lymphocytic leukemia of childhood, uh, the uh, malignancy of Wilms tumor has also had a remarkable uh, uh, increase in survival in our generation. Um, most of the uh, Wilms tumors arrive spontaneously, but about 10% of them are arise uh, within a um, syndrome of a, a congenital uh, malformation syndrome in which distinct loci on chromosomes are found. Remember, that's only 10%. Most of them aren't. Um, uh, it's very rare to have a familial disposition for Wilms. So if a person has Wilms, it's because there's been a de novo mutation rather than something that's been passed on uh, from uh, parents. Um, nephrogenic rests are also seen commonly uh, about 40% of the time when the, uh, bila when the tumor is bilateral and 100%, I'm sorry, about half the time when the tumor is unilateral and 100% of the time when it's bilateral. And that makes sense because um, not only is it a malignant tumor t technically, so to have a nephrogenic rest adjacent to it is not surprising. And of course, if it's bilateral, it's already beyond one certain location. That's why you can say that it's about 100% uh, incidence. Um, if you find these nephrogenic rests, however, it it's a, uh, represent an increased risk for tumor in the contralateral kidney. Uh, it, we'll take a look at a gross uh, picture of a Wilms tumor that's classical, and we'll talk about the three uh, histologic areas that are also classical as well. Uh, the degree of anaplasia or malignancy of a Wilms tumor correlates with uh, the uh, amount or degree of the p53 mutation. So if you do the uh, genetic studies and you find that there's been significant p53 mutation, that's a prognostic factor, isn't it? It also means that the tumor will be less uh, likely to respond to chemotherapy as well. Here is a Wilms tumor. You can see it's soft. You can see it's fairly well encapsulated. You can see these red areas are hemorrhagic. You can see that here are the fleshy soft areas. And when we now zoom in on this on the microscope, we're going to see three things. We're going to see blastema. It's a term that's used almost exclusively for Wilms tumor. We're going to see epithelial elements and we're going to see stromal elements or connective tissue, of course, which you see in basically all tumors. Okay, let's jump back and forth a little bit. Uh, blasti blastema is a classical uh, primitive type of cell which are not really very well differentiated, and it's the uh, so-called classical appearance of your small blue cells. They're basically a cells, not much cytoplasm, round blue nuclei, and blastema is a classical example of small blue stuff. Now, 
you can see in certain areas like here it looks like there's tubules almost like renal tubules and in addition you go whoa does that look a little bit like maybe a primitive glomerulus or maybe that yeah these are the so-called uh, glomeruloid or glomerular differentiation uh, and then we have the third thing, which are the stromal elements, which you can see here. This is all connective tissue, our stroma. Let's take another look. Here is your blastema. Here is your blastema. Here is your blastema. Here are some primitive glomerular type structures in there. And uh, folks, there is no tumor known to man other than a Wilms tumor in which portions of the tumor are starting to form things that look like little glomeruli. And I know you have a very clear idea of what glomeruli look like from histology. And it, I wouldn't have to take a, uh, I wouldn't have to convince you too hard to say, hey, doesn't this look like a glomerulus from a kidney? Perhaps an immature glomerulus? Because that's exactly what it is. And here we go. H this connective tissue here, which you saw more of in the previous one, this is almost solid fibroblast and collagen here. But even in this area here, between the blastema, you could see a little bit uh, more connective tissue than usual. Uh, here's another uh, classical picture. Here's the blastema. Here's some connective tissue. Here's a tubule. Here's a primitive looking glomerulus. All the classical features of Wilms tumor. We are done with general pathology. I'm very happy. I got another 30 seconds to do a little bit of a rant. Uh, I was getting kind of tired during this whole general pathology thing, and I've gotten literally dozens of emails and comments every day which have encouraged me to go on. I'm all fired up, and this has really been such a tremendous and fun project for me. I've always wanted to do it, and now the technology is so easy anybody could do it. And what we'll be moving into in the next movie now is the second half of pathology, which is called systemic pathology, or the pathology of your classical systems, cardiovascular, respiratory, central nervous system, blah, blah, blah. And uh, most pathologists like systemic pathology better than general pathology because it's the kind of material they deal with. It's the kind of stuff they present at tumor boards. So I'm really, really looking forward to taking this big leap now over into systemic pathology and it's a lot more material than general so if we've made let's say a hundred movies so far the uh, number of movies we'll make in general and systemic probably twice as much at least i thank you very much uh, see you uh, in systemic pathology